So today I want to go over a couple extra tips and tricks that you can use in your lasso runs that might make it a little bit easier that I didn't quite cover in my main lasso guide playlist. Now the reason why I didn't cover a lot of these in my lasso playlist specifically for the pelican and the tank gun is because they are confirmed glitches and I was worried that they might have been patched at some point in the future making them either inaccessible or if they weren't patched, uh, unable to get achievements when using them, which there have been talks in the community about doing. However, I don't think they're going to get patched and I don't think any of that's going to happen, but I wanted to do it just in case. That way my guides could still be useful and still provide a lot of useful information without being totally obsolete in case this stuff did happen. And if it doesn't happen, all you have to do is like replace the rocket launcher with the tank gun and I'll show you how to get that here as well. And we'll be starting this list off starting at Outpost Tremonius. So for this first one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the Easter egg where we can summon an airstrike. And in order to do that, you're going to need to press three specific buttons. The first of which will be behind the main building that you leave in Outpost Tremonius, right next to where the Spartan Core is out there. Now the next one's going to be kind of on top of a mountain where I'm aiming at behind those boxes. So after clearing up a little bit, we're just going to grapple our way up there and press the second button. And as soon as you get up there, we're just going to grapple right along the edges here. And you don't necessarily have to kill everyone on the normal platform. You, in fact, you don't really have to kill anyone there because that's kind of the point of why we're doing this. Uh, but just clear enough just to make sure it's safe enough to grapple onto the ledge here. And now you're just going to chill back and wait for the game to do all of the work for you. As in just a second here, the airstrike will begin. And I'll speed this up just a little bit to make sure that you're not just sitting here for a minute while watching all the airstrikes going on. Now I'm taking my time and just shooting some of the enemies with the skewer and helping pick them off, but you don't have to. Normally it'll kill all of them with the airstrike alone, but sometimes an elite will survive, so I'm just popping out just to shoot at them. Now while you're up there, I forgot to do it in that same footage run, but while you're up there, you might as well grab the tank gun as well. You just go up onto that same area you were just at and go onto this specific cannon, and you should be given a prompt to equip the tank gun. Now what's special about the tank gun is the tank gun shoots from your feet and not where your normal gun will be shooting from, which will be like chest level. So you want to make sure that you're not just going to be shooting like the box that's two inches off the ground right in front of you because that will happen. So I recommend usually just jumping before you shoot anytime you use this. In addition, you can't kill yourself with this weapon as it does not do any damage to you when you shoot the ground in front of you. So you can see I've been shooting myself or I've been shooting the ground below myself a couple times, haven't been taking any damage. Now this next tip will help out in terms of being able to move around the map. We're going to be getting a pelican. So once you've captured your first fob, we're going to summon a mongoose. We're going to jump off to the side and grapple on top of that little radio tower looking thing on the fob. Land on the pelican and enter the driver's seat. Now it's very important that you have to end the game and then continue back and enter the game again. Because the pelican will just fly off with you if you don't. So once you reload back into the game, the pelican will actually be glitched out and it'll just be staying there. And at which point you can just get in and start flying it around. And you can use this to trivialize traveling across most things. So like from tower to excavation site, for example, or going and gathering extra Spartan cores that you may want to get to help speed up your lasso Spartan core ability gains. Now one thing to note about this is it doesn't consider this a flying vehicle, even though it is. So anytime you're trying to travel across like those bottomless across those bottomless cliffs that are present in uh, the open world that separate the different sections of the island, you won't be able to, since it still registers you as just a infantry unit. So you have to make sure that you're traveling low enough to the ground and going over where the bridge is normally at. Otherwise you won't be able to progress as you'll just be hitting invisible walls and death barriers along the way. Now for tip three, we're going to be getting the volatile skewer and this one's more optional than anything as it's just a matter of preference of whether or not you like the rocket launcher or the uh, volatile skewer better. 
So right north of the tower is where you can get it. And honestly, as soon as you get your thruster upgraded, you can just snag this super easily. You just jump off the cliff where the skewer is, grab it, and run back, and you're free to just progress through like normal. As since you don't lose any of your weapons in between like mission transitions like you do in some previous Halo games, you're able to keep this throughout the entire game. So you don't have to worry about making sure it's unlocked in the fob. Now the pros and cons of the volatile skewer is the skewer shot plus the explosion will do more damage per shot than a rocket launcher will as the skewer direct hit will do a ton of damage plus uh, the explosion will happen instantly which does even more. In addition the skewer shot itself travels significantly faster than a rocket does meaning that you won't ha if you're firing from farther away you won't have to wait as long for your shot to land which gives the enemy less time to kind of sidestep and avoid your shot entirely. Now the downsides of this one compared to the rocket launcher is you only got one shot per clip, which means it takes a while to reload and in between shots if you miss, you're having a lot more downtime than the rocket launcher would be, as the rocket launcher has two shots per clip and reloads faster than the skewer. In addition, the explosion of the Volatile Skewer does less damage than the explosion of the Rocket Launcher as all of the extra damage is added to the fact that it was a normal skewer shot that does a ton of damage plus the explosion. So if you're just relying on the explosion portion of the Volatile Skewer, it's going to be beaten out by the Rocket Launcher which makes this less effective against groups of enemies than the Rocket Launcher would be. So I would recommend the Rocket Launcher if you're trying to deal with groups of enemies However, the Volatile Skewer is much better for bosses, I would say, in general, as it just does a ton of damage, and if you get direct hits, it just starts melting their health. Now, the only thing is the Rocket Launcher, I still think, is kind of better for bosses, as given your two shots and the way the Boom and Cowbell Skull affect bosses, a lot of the cheese strats for bosses is you're just going to be shooting the rocket kind of close to the boss like on the ground and send the boss flying around or other difficult enemy just flying around and it'll make it harder for them to shoot back at you and that's why i prefer the rocket launcher but the volatile skewer does a lot more damage per shot which can make it so that you can kill the boss quicker if you're landing direct shots and you're able to successfully evade and not have to worry about sending them flying around because since the Volatile Skewer won't do that, you'll be putting yourself at more risk. So it's completely an optional thing. This is just a preference. If you want to do more damage, do the Skewer. If you want to play it more safe, do the Rocket Launcher. And for the final tip, it's a lot more finicky, and I recommend looking up a more detailed guide on this one. But it's the invincibility glitch on Excavation Site, where you need to fall into the laser, and you will sometimes be able to be granted invincibility. Now as you can see in this clip here that I'm just being pushed by the laser that would normally kill me if I jump into it because when you do it correctly you're invincible and you're supposed to like fast travel your way uh, back to one of the fobs and then continue on using your invincibility. However, I for some reason exited out of it and I was not able to replicate it consistently enough to be able to actually make much use of it. Now I know you can kind of grapple your way out of it, but you still won't be able to bring up your like fob menu or to be able to fast travel or do anything like that, so you're kind of just stuck where you are. But as you can kind of see, I'm taking a lot of extra damage that normally would kill me. And you're able to go and gather like more Spartan cores this way or like make this mission a lot easier by having a lot more wiggle room and how much damage you can take. Now note, this doesn't mean that you're permanently invincible, as the invincibility does wear off. I am not sure if it's because of how much damage I take, or because there's a time limit on it, or some other f random issue. I'm not entirely sure on it, and I don't have all the info on it, but I figured I'd at least mention this in the list. Like I said, I recommend you look up a better, more detailed guide on this, as I won't be able to show you exactly how I did it. But if this is something you're willing to try, this could help out a lot by speeding up how many Spartan cores you get, for example, if you want to get your invincibility and then just go round up a bunch of extra Spartan cores that would normally be very difficult on Lasso. That way you can get your thrusters even sooner. And one more thing to note, uh, the invincibility 
will not persist if you change missions. So if you complete excavation site and go on to the next mission, you won't have invincibility for it. So it's a very temporary thing and you won't be able to just go throughout all lasso while invincible. So I, I recommend just, if you do use it, just go and gather starting cores. That way you can make sure you're able to get your thrusters maxed out sooner and which will help out in your future lasso levels. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you were able to learn a little bit more about different types of strategies you can use throughout your lasso runs. Like I said, I didn't want to include this in the main lasso playlist as a couple of them were confirmed glitches and I wanted to make sure that my main lasso guides would still be able to be used. Now of course for like the tank gun for example, just replace the rocket launcher with the tank gun and you'll have a much easier time. As well as if you use the pelican, you'll be able to cut down on a lot of time in between travel and you'll also be cutting out the risk of moving from point A to point B by being able to just bypass a lot of different enemies as well. Also, feel free to join my Discord server as I'd love to be able to engage with you all more, as well as I'll be streaming on Twitch four days a week starting at 1pm through 5.30pm Eastern Standard Time, Wednesday through Saturday. So if you want to see me do more lasso runs or other achievements in action, check it out. Links will be in the description, and until next time, see ya!